Hello and welcome everyone to Binghamton University Student Association webinar. My name is Tanya Barajas. I'm one of the admissions counselors here. Joining me today also from undergraduate admissions is Joe Teasy. Say hi, Joe. Hi, everyone. So today uh, we're going to uh, share with you information about the Student Association, or rather uh, members of the Student Association will share that with you. They're going to talk about um, how they got involved, what experiences that they've been having uh, through, through their involvement, and also how you can get involved. Um, so why don't we go around really quick and have all these Student Association members introduce themselves. Hi everyone, my name is Emma Ross and I'm the president of the Student Association. Hi, my name is John Santer. I'm the Vice President for Academic Affairs of the Student Association. Hi everyone, my name is Christopher and I am the Vice President for Programming of the Student Association. Hi everyone, my name is Julio James. I'm the Vice President for Multicultural Affairs for the Student Association. And hi everyone, my name is Hunter Andrasco and I'm the Speaker of Congress for the Student Association. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, so as we go along, you may have some questions for our student panelists here. You can ask those questions through the Q&A bubble just down at the bottom of your screen. There's a toolbar there. Um, so Joe and I will be providing some chat support, but then we're also going to allow some of those questions to be answered uh, live. Um, so why don't we get into it? I know that there are some slides to share. Um, Chris, do you want to bring those up? All right, so welcome everyone. Um, again, we're the Student Association. We're just gonna go over a little bit of what we do um, and the different things that exist under us, ways to get involved. Um, so again, as Tanya said, if you have any questions, feel free to use the Q&A button um, at any point. Um, so this is our executive board. Um, well, this is, these are the people that um, we are working, where we've been working with this semester. Uh, we all have different positions and different things that we uh, work under. I'm going to have Emma start off with what she does, and then we're going to all talk about a little bit of what we do uh, throughout the year. Hi, so as I said, my name is Emma. I'm the president of the Student Association. My primary role is that I act as a liaison between the students and the administration. So I run a lot of operations out of my office and I oversee the entire executive board, but I also make sure that any student concerns that are expressed to me or that we hear coming up from student Congress or through my executive team are making their way to administration. I act as that primary contact. Um, I guess I'll go next, but just to brush up on the uh, two before me, Erin uh, Bishop is our executive vice president. Um, she deals with the uh, relationships between clubs and also just club structure as a whole. Um, and then there's Alex Summerstein. Um, he is our vice president for finance and he deals with, you know, our budget, uh, make sure uh, that all our clubs are financed and are using their funds correctly. And then there's me, John Santer, vice president for academic affairs. Um, I deal a lot with advocacy and programs that directly um, impact uh, you, the student, and, uh, you know, in the capacity of student life. Julio, you want to go next? Uh, yes. As for me, my, my position is very unique as I am the advocate really for those students that identify under the multicultural um, aspect for affairs, rather. And so you can really think about that as students from various uh, backgrounds. So I get to usually interact with, sometimes I might interact with each uh, position, like I might help in multicultural organization. Uh, how figure out how to navigate what they need to do for their, you know, events to run smoothly, or I may, you know, work with John in terms of like when we're having discussions about the project segment, right? So those often do um, affect the students. So I get to kind of do it all. But yeah, I'm really just in charge of making sure that I, you know, each student has their own voice in terms of, in terms of like bringing it to administration. And so it looks different in that. Okay, and I'm, I'm Chris Wright. I'm the Vice President for Programming. Um, so I deal mostly with programming in my office uh, every year. We put on really great events. 
Um, you'll hear about some of them, spring fling, fall concert, really fun events for students to come out. Um, probably see an artist, have some fun, um, and uh, really it's a, a moment to blow off steam and, and do some really fun things. So we put on a lot of great programs throughout the year and my office supervises them. And like I said before, my name's Hunter. I'm the Speaker of Congress for the Student Association. So basically I share Student Association Congress meetings and the Student Association Congress is the largest group of under, of, sorry, of undergraduate students in a representative body. And basically um, it's composed of different students from different communities across campus. And we advocate on different issues and then also work with the executive board on different initiatives. So who are we and how do we function? So the student, act, uh, the student association acts as a representative government for all Binghamton undergraduate students. And we are set up sort of as a reflection of the United States government in that we have three branches. We have the executive branch, that's us. We are the executive board. Um, we have the legislative branch, which is what Hunter mentioned as the Student Association Congress, which is made up as representatives across campus. It's a really great way to get involved as you first are coming to campus. It's how a lot of us on the executive board got our start in student government. And we have our judicial branch, which is our J board. They deal with making sure that all of our legislative documents are up to code, that they're in line with all of our um, guiding and our governing documents and they make sure and they deal with all grievances on campus dealing with clubs making sure that everything is safe and in line with our governing documents. Um, and the essay, most importantly, um, funds and oversees hundreds of student groups and undergraduate activities here on campus. Um, we have hundreds of clubs and organizations here, basically anything you can imagine we have an organization for. And it's one of the things that we are most proud of is the wide variety of student interests that we fund and make possible. Um, almost anything that you can imagine we make possible from things like Best Buddies, which many of you have in your high schools, um, to organizations like the Cheese Club where you can get together and taste fine cheeses with your friends on weeknights and organizations um, that are professional, pre-professional engineering organizations, biomedical, anything that will further your educational interests, um, organizations with your friends that are furthering your fun and your interests on the side. Like we have anything that you can imagine and you can also start an organization, which is something that I did my freshman year to make sure that my passions were being furthered on campus. So we do everything we can to further your interests here and that's one of the things that we're most proud of as a student association. All right, so I'm just gonna run through um some of the programs that uh, the Student Association uh, looks over. Um, so the Student Association is not just student government, as Emma said. Um, we also have our hand in like all clubs and organizations. Um, but here are a few more. So OCCT uh, shuttle buses, um, we uh, fund and you know run uh, buses uh, across campus. Um, it's one of the best jobs to have on campus for students. Um, and there are essay advocates. Um, if you are uh, to end up going through the conduct system uh, for breaking a, a rule, um, advocates is a great program to have a student on your side uh, guiding you through the process. Uh, the Pipe Dream is our uh, campus newspaper. Um, their schedule is uh, twice a week, uh, Mondays and Thursdays. Um, they'll have a print issue across campus. Uh, Binghamton Soundstage and Lighting, uh, BSSL. Um, uh, usually uh, our student groups have one or two big events um, each year and they you know, take up one of our bigger rooms such as the Mandela Room. Um, and they will normally uh, use BSSL to help them with their uh, microphone uh, needs and you know, things, things of that nature. Uh, Harper's Ferry is our on-campus ambulance service. Um, so you can get certified, um, and it is a very, uh, you know, great uh, thing to put on your resume for uh, if you're going to med school or anything of the sort like that. Uh, Seek Mental Health uh, Helpline is a, um, a student-run helpline where if you need somebody to talk to, you can call them up um, and they'll, you know, talk to you. Um, it's one of our mental health resources we have on campus. Um, then we also have the Escape Bus Services. Um, so this is a bus service we have that will take um, students from, you know, Binghamton to major uh, city centers in New York 
um, for breaks, so Thanksgiving break and winter break, things like that. Um, then we have the art co-op where you can go to purchase uh, art supplies and the food co-op where you can go to purchase, um, you know, cheap food. Awesome. Um, so right now we're going to get into some more opportunities to get involved. Tana, do you mind playing the video that we have for it? Uh, yeah, I'll share that with you right now. See you there. We're the food co-op. We're the BU Pet Band, the Screaming Green. Live action role playing club. We're Paws and Effect. I'm here with BU Bees. We're the Binghamton Cake Line. Harper's Ferry for the on-campus ambulance service. Alrighty, um, so we're just gonna get into a little bit of our student groups at the moment. All right, so as Emma mentioned before, the Student Association oversees hundreds of different student groups and organizations, and she actually listed out a few, and you saw a few in that video that just played. And just a few different areas that we do have clubs in include cultural clubs, clubs that involve volunteer and service, media production clubs. So John mentioned before our Pipe Dream newspaper, which is our student-run newspaper organization here on campus that prints twice a week. Uh, we have performance clubs and then special interest clubs. One of my favorite things about Binghamton is that there's a club for legitimately anybody who's here, no matter what your interests are. Um, so for example, like John was talking about Pipe Dream, you could go from writing in our school newspaper to the next day or joining our cheese club and then meeting once a week, trying a different kind of cheese and then discussing what you think about that. Um, and then something else that I want to talk about that Emma mentioned is if we don't have a club that you're interested in, you could also take it upon yourself to start a student group or organization and work closely with student leaders and ensure that the proper steps are taken to make sure that you can start your own club and have uh, different members join that as well. And if you are interested, you can visit Be Engaged, which is a platform for our student groups, and you can see the link there at the bottom of the slide beengaged.binghamton.edu, and it has a listing of all the different clubs and organizations on our campus. I would encourage you to take a look at that to see uh, what we do have to offer here at Binghamton. And then another way to get involved is with any leadership opportunities. So um, I always encourage students, if you're interested in a leadership opportunity to run for office and represent other students with student government. Uh, so there's a bunch of different ways to do this. So first and foremost is hall and community government. So as you all know, Binghamton is divided into different living communities across campus and each student lives in those communities and uh, there are various residence halls in those communities. So in each residence hall, there is actually an, a community government, I'm sorry, a student government set up there in the form of an executive board that puts on different programming for students in that building. And additionally, each community has its own community government as well. And you could represent your living community on that executive board. And basically those kinds of student governments put on academic and social programming for its residents. And this is really cool in the sense that you get to work with different professionals across campus to bring that, um, to bring that programming into the living community. So for example, you could have the opportunity to work with the collegiate professor of your living community and actually put on an academic programming for students in the building that they live in. Uh, in addition to Hall and Community Government, another way to get involved is SA Congress. So as I mentioned before, I'm the Speaker of Congress, and Congress is composed of 35 undergraduate students who represent different living communities across campus. And basically what we do is we set policy for the Student Association, and we pass different legislation and resolutions advocating for the needs of our students. Um, in addition to that, we do have a very large role in the financing of our student groups and organizations. So we determine the exact allocation for each student group and where those funds are going to, and then the students can actually use the money in their organization to fund different events and things like that. 
Awesome, yeah. And then uh, SAPB, it stands for the Student Association Programming Board. That's really been the hallmark of my experience here. Um, SAPB, as I mentioned before, is responsible for all of the programming uh, that gets put on throughout the year. Um, and this can range from large scale programming to small scale programming. So some of our notable events are Fall Fest, which is a fall festival. We'll have a bunch of uh, different activities there. So we had a bunch of different vendors to sell different items. And we also had um, inflatables. We had performances. We had a bunch of free food, um, which ran out really quickly. Uh, we have Spring Fling, which is a really big festival at the end of the year. Um, it would have been <laughs> next weekend if uh, it were to be happening now, but it's a really, really great festival. Uh, we have a bunch of rides, not just festivals, not just uh, inflatables, but we have a bunch of rides that will come to campus. Um, and we have a bunch of food trucks. Um, there is a free concert that night. Um, and past artists that we've had for concerts at the university so far have been really cool. Uh, one of my favorites has been Post Malone. Um, we've had um, Betty Wap, if you're interested in that. We have had Drake when he wasn't as big as he is now. Really cool people. So we bring different artists to the school. We have comedy shows. Um, we have um, smaller shows, so, you know, you know, artists who are up and coming, alternative maybe, uh, we have those artists come to our school as well. Um, we throw our library rave at the end of the year, a bunch of really cool stuff. Um, and they're really great, as you see here, a lot of students will come to our events and they're really great to look forward to because they usually come around the time of midterms or finals and they're, they're really a great opportunity uh, for you to take some time out of your day and out of your academics and have some fun. Um, so that's it for us. Uh, if you have any questions, we'd love to hear them. We've really just like gone over, you know, just the basics of who we are. Uh, but if you have any specific questions, we'd love to hear. We have a lot of different experiences, so feel free to ask away. Well, hey, everyone. My name is Joe TC Again, I'm the Associate Director of Admissions. Um, thank you guys for putting that together. That was a great presentation. And I've watched the SA through the years just become an amazing, impactful organization. So important to our university. Students have a voice and they're so creative. That video that you showed, that was pretty cool. I think that's taken during a university fest. I love university fest. That's a great day. You know, that's like the Saturday after students have moved in. And boy, just, I think hundreds of student groups out there just kind of getting your attention and making sure, you know, you know who they are and, and sort of asking you to join up. Um, I think that's a lot of fun. So what I want to do for the next a little bit of time is just make sure all of your questions are answered. Um, so hopefully you could chime in and ask a few. Um, so uh, I see one already. Jonathan. Yeah. Jonathan wants to ask, what is the process to start a new club? So Emma, did you want to answer? Yeah, I'd love to speak to that. That's a great question, Jonathan. I actually helped start a new club my freshman year. Um, I'm sure many of you are familiar with Best Buddies. I know it's very popular. Um, in a lot of high schools and middle schools, especially on Long Island. Um, it's getting much bigger across New York State, especially. It's an organization that partners individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities and one-to-one -one friendships um, with individuals without. And it really encourages the growth of those friendships. And its uh, mission is to make sure that there is um, integration of individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities, IDDs, um, into schools and making sure that their growth professionally and academically is not stunted. Um, and we did not have a chapter at Binghamton, so myself and three of my friends my freshman year started working on getting a chapter started at Binghamton. The first step is to go to the executive vice president's office. There is a chartering assistant. Um, so Erin is not here today. She is our EVP. So you go to her office or you send her an email. Um, and you set up a meeting with the chartering assistant um, and they set you up with a list of there is basically a checklist of assignments that you have to do. The first is you have to get a certain number of signatures. It's changed. I believe it was at the time 200. It's my, it might have changed since then. On our website, Bingham, uh, BinghamtonSA.org, there is actually a list. If you go to get involved and start a club, you can actually see all of this listed out right there. Um, but you get a certain number of signatures of people not who want to join your club, but just who think it would be a good idea. So you just walk around campus and you say, hey, I have this idea for a club. Do you think it would be a good idea? And people say, hey, yeah, I think that'd be a great idea for a club. And they sign your sheet. And it's as simple as that. We did it in about three days. We walked around the marketplace. We walked around the quad during the spring. And we just told people why we were passionate about this idea. Um, then we wrote out a constitution. We met with a constitution assistant from her office. And we 
told them our ideas. They have a draft of like a basic constitution and we worked with that and created the constitution for our club. Then we started holding executive board meetings and we kept minutes from those meetings. You have to have three of those. Then we started holding general body meetings. We told everyone we knew, we created a Facebook page. We sent out emails, we uh, got people who were interested to sign up for our email listserv and we started holding general body meetings um, and we kept minutes from those and we submitted those to the chartering assistant and once you have three of those um, and you meet with an event planning assistant who helps you plan your first event um, then you can go to the internal affairs committee which is a subsection of congress it's one of the congress committees and they take a look at all this documentation that you've like assembled throughout, it usually takes one to two semesters to get all of this done. And they say, yeah, we think you're ready to have a club. And once you do that, you get all set up with the student association and that's when you're able to start getting funding for your club. So it is not like the easiest thing in the world, but it's also not hard. We give you like a whole process. We set it up for you. We lay it out for you. There's like a set of instructions and steps by steps that you follow. And we really set you up to succeed with it. It took us one and a half semesters to do it. And now it is one of the most successful like things that I've ever been involved with. We went from just four girls who were really passionate about this idea. Now the club has over a hundred members. We have I think 50 to 75 people who attend every single event that we hold. And that happened between my freshman and my senior year. Um, and it's really, truly one of the most amazing things I've ever been involved with. Wow, that's exciting. Very cool story. Hey, um, before we continue to the next uh, question, Chris, could I please ask you to stop the screen share? And we'll get back to all of your lovely faces. Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Chris. And um, Joel, why don't you take us to our yeah. next question? There's another question, and it's, and it's someone who's anonymous who wants to know, um, can you explain a little more about how you got your positions? So, for example, did you have to run against other candidates, and did you have to get a majority vote, and how did that work? Who, who was yeah. best on this I think it'd probably be best if we split this into two. I can answer about the, the like normal e-board members, um, but Hunter, our Speaker of Congress, uh, he'll probably you know provide a slightly uh, different answer. So um, yes, in uh, the spring semester, we all uh, ran, campaigned, and there was a campus-wide election for you know all undergraduates were given the opportunity to vote. Um, and we needed a majority vote to be elected to our position. Um, the, you know, the whole school sort of gets involved. Uh, we were covered in Pipe Dream. Um, they did endorsements. Um, various other clubs and organizations did endorsements as well or, you know, held uh, events where you could, you know, speak between uh, group membership and uh, the person running. Uh, we had a big sort of night called Sweeps, is where we uh, give our speeches and talk uh, directly to, uh, you know, people who are interested, people from various communities across campus, um, and they ask us, you know, about our platform and what we sort of want to do with our position. Um, so it's probably, I believe it's from um, pretty much the beginning of this, this semester, which is around uh, January till um, uh, the middle of March is where the sort of campaign uh, and running and then the vote um, sort of period uh, is, uh, yeah. Yeah, and then for anybody else who's looking to come to campus, uh, like I mentioned before in the presentation, a good way to get involved is to just run for regular student government, like hall government and community government or uh, the Student Association Congress. So Emma and myself, actually our freshman year, we ran together actually against each other kind of um to be congress representatives for new and community and uh we both won positions and were in congress for our first few years together and then our junior year emma was actually the speaker of congress which is the position i'm holding now which is a position elected from our congress members um and then the best thing about student government here is it that it kind of comes at you so as a freshman you don't have to reach out and do your own research your student government leaders who are elected in the spring will actually be reaching out to you for different opportunities and how to get involved which i think is really great um so there's not one specific route that you can take to get involved in a leadership position here on campus excellent good thank you um so sean asks if you're a leader of student government of a student government group, is it too difficult to be able to uh, balance uh, 
the responsibilities of another group? Um, is there too many responsibilities, including schoolwork and all these? Is it too much, or what are your thoughts on that? Um, Chris, do you still want to take this? Do you want to take this one, or yeah, I'll, I'll start answering, and anyone else can can jump in um, with their experiences here. Um, so yeah, I I've actually have been in this situation myself. I started off in my freshman year and. I was trying to figure out if I should take on responsibility or if I should just focus on my academics. And I ended up slowly taking on um, some leadership opportunities and they were amazing. For me, I think it really is all up on, all due to how you organize yourself um, and how you manage your daily life. I think it's certainly possible and many of our students are um, doing other activities and doing their schoolwork. It's part of their big engine experience entirely to you know, be super active and to also be doing their academics. Um, so I don't think it's necessarily difficult to be the leader of another group. It's again, it's going to be based on how you organize. For me, I like to use Google Calendar and all of those uh, resources so that I can like keep actually organized. Um, but I just felt like it just came in my day like a normal class. I, it, you know, I had a meeting at seven um, or an executive board meeting that next week and it just fit in my calendar in, in a way that didn't interfere with my classes or my time to do homework. Um, it just kind of fit there, which is amazing. It's not again, too much responsibility to handle when you're doing schoolwork. But again, it's all up to you. Uh, it might be different for you. So you can just feel how that is for you in your freshman year and in your first semester, and you can make that decision for yourself. Yeah, uh, did you oh, um, yeah so how this, when, that was actually very nice. Chris. Um, the time management is a big thing. The next thing I would say to focus on is making sure that regardless of what you're trying to do, understand that you are a student first. And so like when you're planning on becoming a student leader, a major, most organizations will require you to have a minimum GPA up, right? So, like, you may have a minimum of a 2.0 or a 2.5. Um, rarely you'll see a 2.0, right? So, and if you're going to lead a campus, you will want to make sure that you can be like, hey, like, I, I, I'm also a student. Um, so, you'll hear that a lot. And so, think about that as you plan on what you're trying to engage with. Um, and so, another thing is, I would say, like, for me, I'm an equal opportunity uh, or EOP student here at Binghamton University. So I was fortunate enough to participate in the Binghamton Enrichment Program. And so for the summer, I was here at Binghamton. I was taking uh, eight, eight credits and I was trying to basically, what happened is I got to learn about what the campus could offer. So I got to plan out how I would gradually increase my student leadership. And so that may be something you might, uh, now that you're in this, participating in this webinar, you can ask, right? So you notice that there's a, there's a community level leadership, right? There's student organization leadership, um, and then you can go up and towards the overall student association. So like you would, if I were coming in, I would, I gradually started off as president for Old Dingman, which was just a building, then I moved up for VPMA to uh, uh, Vice Chancellor for Multicultural Affairs for the Dickinson community. And then I moved uh, into just professionally developing myself. And then I ran for um, executive board for the field association. So you could gradually grow as well. That is also an option. And the last thing I'd like to add is like college is the best time to like explore your interests. Like this is the most access you will ever have to this many options of this many different things like at your fingertips included in the price that you're already paying for college. Like, you, I just, I don't think I've ever had this many opportunities, like, presented to me at once. And, like, if I could go back and do college again and do my freshman year again, I'd probably do 500 other activities and, like, do it totally different just for a new experience because I have loved every single second of my time at Binghamton and I'm so grateful for the opportunities I've had. And every single one of my friends has taken a totally different path and been just as happy with the incredibly different array of activities and interests and incredible opportunities that they've had. You know, like, there are so many different things that you're going to get a chance to try and do and there's there's really like not a wrong path that you're going to get to take so long as you're choosing things that like are interesting and exciting to you so like i just i just encourage you to really like follow your interests follow your passions and like try things that push you outside of your comfort zone but make sure like like Khalil said like you're a student first and like that's a really big thing to keep in mind but make sure you're like you're trying things that are new and exciting to you because like this is the best time to do it and you will never ever regret having done that that's really good 
Um, yeah, I mean, how impactful, I, you know, I watch students grow and become amazing, amazing, exciting, passionate people, finding what their passions are on campus. Um, you know, it impacts us as a culture and as a community, right? And that's the question that our next student has. Um, what kind of influence does the essay have on our campus as a culture and as a community? That's a big question. Yeah, so I can start to answer this one. Oh, I got it. Yeah, clearly, and then if you want to piggyback off of what I say. So the essay, one of the biggest things about it, and something that, something that everybody should know, is that every single undergraduate student is automatically a member of the student association. So it's not something you have to sign up for or like go out of your way to look for. Automatically, as an undergraduate student, you are a member of the student association. So this entitles you to um, all the services that we offer, to all the clubs and organizations that we have to offer as well. Um, something also that's really cool is that uh, the student association itself, so like the people who run it, the seven of us on the executive board, we are responsible for um, all of those students. We're accountable only to those students. We don't really have supervisors above us, um, which entitles us to make decisions that benefit the students of our campus. And as a result, all of our student clubs and organizations are able to do the same thing. Um, I don't know if we mentioned this before, but each individual club, its leadership is composed of entirely students. So uh, if they want a faculty advisor or somebody to like help assist or come and speak to them, they're more than welcome to do that, but it's the students making the decision. So the impact that we have on the campus culture is wide ranging in that it hits every single part of our campus, which I think is really great because as I said before, you know, it's run by students and it's the voice of students that decides the direction of this organization. Um, that basically sums it up, Hunter. It's very good. Um, but yeah, we are essentially just like with a voice, right? So students bring their voice to us and we bring it to where they need to go. We point them in the right direction and we try to bring things, right? So even um, if you're talking about the uh, another aspect of culture, right? Um, Chris, right? He brings performers. He brings art. He brings... Um, exhibits, programming, speakers, right? Like we kind of even influenced the train of thought or like what we were pushing as a university as well in that aspect. So we do impact the culture very, very well. And we try to be very intentional with decision-making and we usually meet as an executive board before we just push a one, one track minded thing. So, yep. Hey, Khalil, now I have your attention. Just What are some of the multicultural clubs and organizations on campus? Can you talk about them? Some of the multicultural clubs on, a, on campus are, you have your, so there, there's the Black Student Union, also known as BSU, there's the Latin Student Union, also known as LASU, there's ASO, which is the African Student Association, there's ASU, which is the Asian Student Union, then you have, also you have SHADES, which is um, an organization that is really, basically, what they, they stand for is the representing the those who identify under a different spectrum in terms of you know the LGBTQI, LGBTQI plus community and then you also have uh, so much um yeah and then you also have the multicultural so there's the student association organization, then you have the multicultural uh, fraternities and sororities. So we also have the, the Divine Nine, or, and then we have NALFO, if I'm not mistaken, which is National Association for, for uh, I really don't know off the top of my head. I don't wanna, I don't wanna mispronounce it, but we have those. Um, and then we also have the, this outside of the essay, we actually have been to university have a multicultural resource center, which is catered towards um, kind of assistance in the advocating and providing additional resources for those students that need help. Um, and, you know, where we're talking like even uh, best buds, right? We're talking about people with uh, disabilities. We can count that in as well. And so it's very interesting. We have Halal, which is, uh, um, which is basically a, a Jewish, religious-based uh, student organization. Uh, the majority of Anglican universities uh, campus does have people who practice uh, the Jewish religion. Um, we have Christian fellowship. 
Oh man, this is a lot. There's literally over two hundred wow. words. Um, but that's, that's just off the top of my head. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I just wanted to cut in here um, and yeah, say yeah. there are so many. I think there are over. I think the number is like a hundred or so different groups that fall into that background. There are religious groups. There are groups. Um, that are specific to different cultural backgrounds as well. Um, what we can do is we can kind of link that link with the MRC there so you can kind of go ahead and see them because even if we mention them, there are so many, so um, many which is yeah. awesome, honestly. Um, but we're going to link that there so that you can kind of go through and see if there's a specific group for your interest there. Good. That's great. Thank you for that, guys. Um, here's another really good question. Um, what are some of the best ways for freshmen or transfers to get involved? Best ways. Give some advice. What do you think? Um, so uh, Hunter could, you know, talk about Congress, and we've mentioned that already. Uh, there's also a bunch of clubs that cater to, uh, you know, certain academic backgrounds. So there is a transfer student uh, um, transfer student organization. Um, I believe it's called uh, Transfer um, Student. I'm pretty sure it's Transfer Student Association. Um, and or no, Binghamton Transfer Student Association, so BTSA, um, and they're they're a pretty uh, close knit group. Um, so if you're specifically a transfer, that's a great way to meet with other transfers and sort of um, have someone from similar background. Um, transfers are a pretty big uh, portion of our population here, um, and you know they make up and they're really important for uh, you know for like me as a vice president for academic affairs. Um, making sure that everyone feels home at home here and feels like they're represented. Um, I just wanted to say something quick. I saw somebody raise their hand in the attendees. Um, so I don't know if everyone knows how to ask a question. Um, yeah. uh, so just a, a brief reminder. I know we went over this in the beginning of the webinar, but if you joined us a little bit uh, midway through, um, to have your questions either to have your questions answered, go ahead, use that Q&A bubble. It's right next to the, the chat box um, and you can enter your questions in there. Some might be answered uh, via text by Joe or myself, or, but most of them right now, there seems to be there being answered live. Uh, so if you want your question answered live, you go ahead and put that in the Q&A bubble down below. Um, also, I'd like to add something on the best way to get involved that I think is to just put yourself out there and, you know, if you're interested in a club and you hear about it, just go to their general interest meeting that'll be held either the first or second week of school. Um, and you'll be able to sit there and learn more about that organization before you fully commit to it. Uh, but putting yourself out there is the first step to getting involved in anything. And I think that that's the most important thing. Um, you know, when you hear about a meeting, just put it in your calendar and make sure you go to it, ask questions, learn more about it, and then um, do that with as many clubs or organizations as you want. I think I did like probably something somewhere around 10 my first week here. Um, also, like Joe was mentioning before, University Fest, which occurs in the fall, all of our clubs and organizations are going to be set up and just going and talking to people already involved with the club or organization is a great way to learn more about that as well. And like, I know it feels like awkward. People want you in their organization. Yes, they do. They do. It is not. I know it feels like weird and hard and stuff. And like, especially if you're a transfer, I know like, especially in the spring semester, it feels like people are like, like set in their ways and like it's halfway through the year and stuff. And like that can feel difficult, especially if you're coming in as like a spring admin. But like people want you in their organization. Like nobody is ever gonna say no or like not want you in their org. And if you show up and you say, hey, like I'm new, can I sit with you? Or like you go up to the president or like an e-board member and introduce yourself at the beginning of the meeting, they, I guarantee you will say, hey, let me introduce you to so-and-so. You sit with them during the meeting, like they are gonna explain everything to you. And you will have like somebody to talk to and they want you in their org. And it is going to be one of, like, the best experiences. And, like, if you put yourself out there, just like Hunter said, like, it will open doors. Like, I had to do that, like, weird, awkward first step with an org that I really wanted to be a part of that I joined halfway through the year. And it was one of the best choices I ever made. And it was just, like, a club sport that I didn't have time for in the fall. And I felt so weird because club sports can be, like, really intense and, like, that team bond. But I was so glad that I joined when I did. I mean, I agree with that. You know, I think you know, what makes Binghamton so special, I mean, it's, it's the students, right? I mean, the students are amazing. They're friendly. They're fun. I mean, there's always something to do at Binghamton. You know, this is not a campus where students go home on the weekends. They don't. They stay, and it's Division One sports, and it's just constantly just a lot of fun. So, um, Tanya, did you have any other questions that you saw come your way that you want to contribute to this, Tanya? 
Um, sure. You know, one below that I thought was interesting, somebody asked, are there requirements to join SA, which I think Hunter already had answered by saying that all students are automatically um, part of the Student Association, but I think maybe uh, this question has to do more with like the executive board. Are there requirements to join the executive board? Yeah. Uh, Emma, would you mind? Yeah, we can talk a little bit about that. Um, so to join the executive board, there are different requirements for each position. Um, so I know we just changed the GPA requirement. Mm -hmm. Hunter, what is it now? It's a 3.0 3. now. It's a three now. But that, um, that's strictly for the executive board. Strictly for the executive board, not for Congress. For Congress, I believe it's still a 2-5, correct? For Congress, it's still a 2-5. For the executive board, it's a three. The reason we changed it is because these are incredibly demanding positions. We spend um, a, a large number of hours doing what we do. Um, it is something that I believe I can say for all of us that we love what we do. Um, I wouldn't spend any less time in the office or... Um, with my team or doing any of the and investing any less time into what we do so there's it's a three gpa um we for my office it's just that you have to have served on an executive board or in congress prior and that stands for um academic affairs and for um vpma and for chris's office you have to have served on sapb as a um, just on one of the just on any board or any of the boards, right, there. Chris? Yep. Mm -hmm. For Alex's office, it's that you have to have worked in his office or have been a treasurer, right? Mm -hmm. So for that's for the vice president for finance, you have to have been a treasurer prior to running for his office. Um, for mm -hmm. for executive vice president, it's also just that you have to have served on an e board. Um, so there's, those are the specific requirements. They're honestly not super strict. They're, they're, they're open for a reason. It's because we want anyone who wants to contribute to the SAE board who wants to be in one of these leadership positions to have the opportunity. The only restrictions that are there are because if you're going to handle the amount of money that the SA executive board handles, you have to have experience with money and you have to have experience with the way the student association particularly handles money. Our treasurers all have to pass a treasurer's exam um, because of the way the SA sets it up and the way we distribute money to our organizations. And for Chris's office, obviously you have to have sat on the programming board prior because we do really incredible programming. He's honestly being very modest when he talks about the programming that we do. Chris puts an incredible amount of work and we've had some really incredible concerts. He didn't even mention that we had Doja Cat at our fall concert who has become huge in the last few months. Um, so we do really incredible programming. We have bump shows um, regularly which feature really great up and coming artists. We had Pete Davidson here in the fall as a comedy show. Um, we have really incredible shows and like that takes an insane amount of time and effort and coordination. So like that's the reason that there's a prerequisite for that office as well. Yeah, just to go off that, um, like Em said, these aren't uh, too high requirements. You could come in as a freshman um, at that within the first few weeks be elected to um, serve as a Congress representative for your community and by the end of freshman year you can theoretically run for the executive board um, after just one year of being at Binghamton um, to then set yourself up for the next year to be on an executive board meeting with people like the president of the university, the vice president for the university, the provost for the university, administrators. Um, so it's a big responsibility that you could have access to theoretically as a sophomore. And I don't know if we'd recommend it, but <laughs> really, I think what we say is like, get the most out of your time here. Like I joined the executive board, like Hunter mentioned, I was Speaker of Congress as a junior. Khalil is currently a junior serving on the executive board and he'll continue to serve in my role next year as president. Um, and so like, there's definitely a capacity to serve in mul on this e-board in multiple years. Um, and it's something that like, I'm very glad that I did as I feel like I've been able to make a greater impact over two years. But there's also 
you don't have to do what we do to make a huge impact on this campus. And that's one of the most important things to remember is we see like incredible student leaders make a huge impact every single day by doing what they're passionate about in their role in student organizations. And it's really about finding what you're passionate about. And you don't even have to do a student club. Like you can make a huge impact by doing research on campus. You can make a huge impact by being an incredible student athlete and lifting up those around you on your team. Like there are so many ways to make an impact here. And it's really just about finding like where you are happy, where you are feeling like your home, where you are succeeding as a student and here on your campus. And like, that's what the student association is about. Like we're here to help you find like the place that you are most successful and just to help you succeed as a whole. And like our office is on the top floor of um, the union. We are like, we're open 10 to five when the campus is open, when we're not in a pandemic. And we are always there like as a resource for students. Like that is our primary goal. Like that is our purpose is to serve you guys and to make sure that you are succeeding here on campus. Great, thanks so much. Um, yeah, I, I totally agree. I mean, honestly, you know, I, I work in admissions and I watch students to succeed, not just academically, but you know, when you graduate and you're going on, you want these experiences and it's really co-curricular in a way. It's called experiential learning and it's so classically Binghamton, right? Learning by doing and building relationships. Um, you know, I guess one of the questions that just came through and they talked about, you know, is it an internship or is it a paid job? Is, is there a sort of formality to it? I know that we have what's called a Fleischman Career Center not directly tied into the SA, although there's so many students involved, but, but there's a place where students go directly to get internships and jobs and career. And, and do you want to talk about, you know, be engaged or be involved and how that works? You want to go with that? All right. Well, um, first, so. question center. Facts. 100%. Yeah. Like, go. The, the, I don't know if they've uh, reached out or if you, uh, I don't know what they're doing in terms of letting you get exposure to campus, but the Fleshman Center is definitely a first stop to really just get what you need in terms of understanding what a resume is really. Cause you know, I had one in high school and wow. Um, like I went there for like 30 minutes left with a totally new resume, cover letter, just understanding like what it takes to apply to internships as well. And so the Fleshman Center is actually right outside of the uh, marketplace, right before you walk in if you're coming out of the Peace Squad. And y'all are probably like, what is these places? Um, that's, uh, that's tough. But it's, it's, you, you'll never not hear about the Fleshman Center, which is also a good thing. And um, John, I'm going to let you finish up. But I definitely wanted to say the Fleshman Center is one of the first stops. I think within your first two weeks, you should, you should go there. All right, um, so, I mean, reading the question, I thought it was talking about these positions. These positions are paid. We also have office, um, our own offices that we have uh, people who work in our offices. Um, those are also uh, stipended positions, but we also have interns work for us. Um, then we talk about some of our programs like OCCT. Um, that's one of the highest paying jobs on campus. Um, there are other jobs that you can get involved with, um, like, um, working in the bookstore, um, working in, um, you know, the marketplace or, in, uh, you know, different food places. Um, someone mentioned about financial aid. I know this isn't directly related, but um, like uh, Hunter and Khalil, they both do, um, they both RAs. And for that, they, you don't get paid, but your uh, room and board um, is covered. And also you get a free meal plan, if I'm correct. Yeah. So there's a lot of ways to get involved. Um, it's not really an internship, but uh, right on top of the Fleischmann Center is also our, um, a, I forget, I'm blanking on the name, but it is a department that will help you get situated with research. Um, and I'm involved in a lab. It's, it's great. I love it. Um, but there's also paid lab positions that you can get involved with. So if you're in one of the STEM fields or even not, um, I know there's a history professor that we talked about at TORS um, who um, did research on ghost stories at different um, schools. So there's a lot of different ways to get involved in research as well. So um, whether it's a paid job, an internship, or research, there's a lot of things you can do um, to either boost your resume or 
you know, get more money. Um, yeah. yeah, you can work. I work at the gym. I'm a spin instructor. Um, there's internships you can take through the gym to become either a certified group fitness instructor or personal trainer. Um, so like I have friends who are yoga instructors, Zumba instructors, and that's a really cool thing to do if you're into fitness or if that's a passion of yours as well. Lots of ways to get involved. It really is. Yeah, um, that's great. Um, we got one more, right? We're getting close on time, but I wanted to be sure these questions were answered. Um, and it, talk, it asked about sororities and fraternities. I know that's not directly under the SA, um, but I know it's important to students. Um, there's a certain percentage, and it's 12 to 15 percent, I think, is mm -hmm. are active at, in fraternities or sororities at Binghamton. So, yeah. um, uh, are you, are you involved with that? I can. Uh, Emma, you can talk about it. I'm in the multicultural one. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to talk about multicultural, and then I can talk about Panhellenic and. Yeah, so the multicultural one that I'm a part on is called the National Panhellenic uh, uh, Council, and so that is what is also referred to as the Divine Nine. So I'm a member of Kappa Alpha Tau Fraternity Incorporated, um, specifically the new Kappa chapter. And so in terms of, uh, and there's also some more Latinx-based um, um, fraternities, and then of course you have your Asian-based, and you know, um, so those are kind of like they've more focused on, their mission statement will more, more likely be aligned with the uplifting of that specific uh, culture. And so that's one, uh, in terms of joining them, it's really, uh, it is a office called the Returning and Sorority Life here at Binghamton University, um, run by LC, uh, I forget how to pronounce his, it's like, I don't want to pronounce his name wrong, but, He's referred to as LC, and so you could kind of go there for your basic information. But I'll also suggest, like, if you want to, for usually how it works is you kind of just talk to a member. So, for example, if you were interested, and in, there's also Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated here, uh, usually a member, you could walk up to them and kind of be like, hey, um, you know, introduce yourself, and then, you know, be like, get to know them, and then go from there. There's usually informationals as well. Informational is a big way we can just learn about the fraternity as a whole in general. Um, and then, you know, just going to events in general as well. Uh, I'm not sure. Was there a specific question? Or is it just like... It was just general. Just talk about it, yeah. Like, yeah. And with the non-multicultural frats and sororities, the Panhellenic yeah. and IFC Greek life, um, you aren't allowed to rush until spring semester of your freshman year. That's when I... Uh, rushed my sorority, I'm part of Find You, and the formal rush takes place in the spring. Um, so for the sororities, they all gather in the, um, the union. The fraternities do it differently. I can't really speak to that exactly, but I know they ha all have their own individual processes that are overseen by Greek life as well. Um, and it's a three-day process for the fraternities. I believe it lasts uh, about a week. And then you take part in the semester long, um, like initiation process, and then you join. And I've been a part of it for three and a half years. It was a great part of my college experience. I really enjoyed it. Um, but we don't allow you to, Binghamton chooses not to allow people to join sororities and fraternities until spring semester to ensure that you have a full semester to experience college life without Greek life so that you have an opportunity to get involved. And like, I'm really grateful for that because it allowed me to establish really solid and wonderful friendships outside of my sorority and then also establish really great friendships inside of my sorority. Um, I think it's a really great way to set it up um but i'm happy to answer other questions if there's like specifics about it but if you reach out to lc and fraternity and sorority greek life he's happy to answer it and if you google binghamton greek life there's a whole website that has a ton of q a's on it so you can just find more specifics there just to butt in there's also pre-professional uh, sororities and fraternities as well so pre-med uh pre-law you know there's business um as well so not just social or multicultural um, they can also further your, um, you know, professional development. Okay. True. I will say as well as like, um, there's a thing you'll hear uh, in terms of just fraternities and sororities in general. It's just like do your research, uh, mainly because like, you know, these are bonds that are, you know, lifelong often. So make sure that, you know, you're, if you are joining a fraternity or sorority, whatever you choose, it's like something that you see yourself doing lifelong and kind of just like, 
it's like if you want a lot of people may you know join the organization just because of their friends and that, i mean that is cool right if that's what y'all both want but don't let that be the thing that kind of drives you to make a lifelong commitment if that makes sense and that's a that's a really good point i mean you know i was a student at binghamton 30 plus years ago right and um and you make lifelong friendships, right? Bonds. And, you, you know, some of you on this board are going to graduate soon. And I know it's, it's just going to be a continued relationship as you go forward. So, of course, fraternities, sororities, but all the things you do on campus that you're involved with, it stays with you, you know, forever, really. You know, you'll go back to homecoming years later and say, remember, we used to belong to Harper's Ferry and, or you, know, you name the club organization, have these, even the communities that you live in these lifelong bonds that will stay with you as alum and, and moving forward. I, I got to tell you, you know, I am who I am today very much because mm -hmm. of the experiences that I had at Binghamton 30 years ago, right? So your life this stays with you and extends you through your life. So make really good when you're here. This is an amazing community, an amazing place. Um, we have a few more minutes. Um, Tanya, how do you want to, do you want to go around real quick, summaries, goodbyes, or how? Do you... Yeah, I think I, I think let's end with goodbyes. Um, before so before we head into the the final comments, I want to thank everybody who was a part of this uh, session today. So all of our attendees, all of our panelists as well. Um, I'm going to share another screen with you because we do have more events that are coming up. So I just want to share how you can find those events. Um, so this is our Binghamton University website. So if you go to visit us, you're going to see um, ways to get in touch with us. You can get in touch with us through the Zoom platform again, Monday uh, through Fridays, we are offering uh, live chat hours. You can chat with actual students uh, again on Wednesdays in the afternoon. Um, we have a lot of activities. And then when you scroll down to the screen here, you can see more uh, webinars, more activities that we have. So you have the student association program that we are doing today right now. Also coming up, we have LGBTQ plus life and community. And we also have a faculty webinar series coming up with Stanley Whittingham, a recent Nobel laureate for um, in, within chemistry. So that should be very exciting too. Um, so why don't we go around now and say uh, all of our, our final goodbyes and any uh, last well wishes or uh, offers of advice for, for our students who are still with us. Um, is there an order or we could just go as in? Start off. Why don't you go, why don't you start us off, Khalil? All right. Um, you know, to all those who have joined, thank you for your time as well. Like, definitely I know the transition from, um, into, into Binghamton is going to be tough. It's going to be unique. Um, y'all will be the first ones to have that experience. Um, and so take pride in that, right? Like, take pride in, like, hey, this is how I started off my college career. And, you know, that's something that you can look at and just, you know, carry on, right? Um, and then utilize the resources that are being offered as much as you can. Um, you know, God willing, we do end up back on campus. Um, you know where to go. You know what to do. You know what you want to get involved in. You know what to focus on. And so you're just making yourself a better student as soon as possible. That's good. Thanks, Khalil. I can go next. Um, so first, thanks for joining us today. And just some words of advice. Uh, like I mentioned before, just put yourself out there when you get here. It's really important that you just try new things and new experiences and follow what you're interested in, like Emma said as well. Uh, if you're ever looking for help from anybody, reach out to one of your student leaders on campus and I'm sure they'll be there for you. Binghamton has such a great support system and the Student Association is definitely part of that. So once again, thanks for joining us and hope to see you in the fall. Yeah. Thanks, Hunter. Emma, do you want to go next? Go ahead, Chris. Go ahead, Chris. Okay. Um, well, I was just going to say thank you all for attending as well. Um, just a little bit of my story. Um, I ended up choosing Binghamton specifically because of student life here. Um, it was really the, the break point for me because I was looking at a bunch of different colleges. I had applied to 60, 60. Oh. Um, and so I had, I know, first of all, that's a, that's ridiculous, but I had so many choices and Binghamton 
was literally on the top of that list because I fell in love with student life here. Genuinely, I went on the YouTube page, saw much of student life, and I came on campus and I felt that myself. So hopefully we're able to show you a little bit of that. Um, Binghamton is really one of the best student-run campuses across, and honestly, the nation, I think. We do have a lot of students running the campus in different capacities, and I think it's unlike anything I've ever seen. We'll have amazing opportunities for leadership and just for having fun. Um, don't feel pressured to be a leader in any way. I just think it's awesome to have that many opportunities around you. Um, so I think that's really great. Before we end, though, and of course, as other people talk, um, I'm going to just look in the chat. I'm going to share that link for uh, the Multicultural Student Groups link there. And then I'm also going to share my screen one more time to give you our email and our website so you can see that. But that's going to be after. Just keep in mind that you're going to see that once before we end. Um, I'm guessing we're just doing goodbyes and like final remarks. I wasn't paying too much attention. I was answering yeah. uh, a few of the questions. So all the questions are now answered. Uh, so if you go in, um, some of them I typed up answers to, so you can check them out if you had a question that you felt like we didn't cover, um, just so nobody felt uh, like they didn't get it. Um, but, um, you know, thank you for coming. Um, I have a lot of great experiences with uh, all these people, uh, some more or less, um, but it's really just been amazing to be a part of the Student Association and to, you know, serve in this capacity. Um, it's going to be a lot different because I'm going to be going to the medical school and stuff like that. So I, I doubt I'll be having as much fun as I am right now. So Great. Thank, you guys. Jen. Thank you guys so much for coming and listening to us and um, coming to Binghamton was probably the best decision I ever made. And I feel so grateful to have had the experiences that I've had and to have served on this executive board with these people like not only have I had the most wonderful leadership experiences, these people have become some of my closest friends and I've gotten to like make such a difference on our campus with them. And that's truly been probably my best experience at Binghamton. So I really just encourage you to, you know, go outside of your comfort zone because doing that was really what changed my life here. So good luck with everything. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us with the emails that uh, Chris is gonna share with you. Um, and we're happy to answer any more of your questions that you have. Thank you all. I, I don't really have any words of wisdom. I'm, you know, I'm not in the SA. I'm not in your dad's age. So <laughs> you don't want to hear from me. But, but again, I hope you make great decisions. We love Binghamton. We just do. We're proud of Binghamton. You know, you can see that. I remember being in high school, sneaking on campus, um, playing basketball with the college kids and saying, someday I'm going to be at Binghamton. I know I, I'm going to be here. And I was. I graduated. I loved it. Met my wife as a student here. So we're lifelong Binghamtonians. And uh, my hope for you is you find what your passion is. And, and I'm telling you, Binghamton is just an amazing place. So that's it. Tanya. Yes, thank you all again. Um, and we want you to get involved on campus. Your experience outside of the classroom is just as important as your experience inside of the classroom. Um, as you've heard from Chris, it is also extremely formative in, in his choice to, to come to Binghamton, and that's true of a lot of our students. Um, and it's also one of the things, one of the reasons why so many students not just choose to come, but also choose to stay. Um, so we are very proud of all, all the students who stay with us and who persist and who go on to do wonderful things. Uh, so thank you again for joining us today, all the panelists and all the attendees for being with us. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye. Thanks.